Hello everyone, welcome back to another Coding Kaiju tutorial. My name is Diego. We're gonna pick up right where we left off. So let's open up our player scene. We're gonna add a new node and it's gonna be of type node2d. And we're gonna rename that to laser weapon. So let's right click that and save it as its own scene. And we're gonna save that in the objects folder. Laser weapon. And now let's go ahead and open up that scene. We're gonna attach a script to it. And we're just gonna define a function really quick called shoot. And we're just gonna write pass right here. We'll come back to this later. First, we have to define what our laser weapon will shoot. So obviously it'll shoot lasers. So we have to create that scene. Go ahead and um, add a new node here. And our laser is not gonna be interacting with the physics engine. It's just gonna you know, travel upwards and um, you know, detect if it uh, collides with anything. So for that reason, we're going to use an area 2D node. Go ahead and create that. And we're going to rename that to laser. Let's add a sprite to our laser. Right. And let's go over here to the inspector window, click the little drop down arrow, go to load. Open up our assets folder, images, and lasers. All right, there's a lot to choose from. Um, I'm going to choose laser green 11. Go ahead and open that up. Make sure to select the laser node again. And I'm going to add a collision shape. All right, go over here, click the drop down arrow, and well, all lasers. Our laser is a rectangle, so let's go ahead and define a shape. Click on the text right here, Rectangle Shape 2D, to expand its properties. And I'm going to make this one uh, 6 by 28. All right, now let's save the laser as its own scene. And laser scene. All right. So we're actually going to instance um, new lasers uh, through our code. So we actually don't want it here um, in the editor. So go ahead and delete that. And that's just going to delete the instance of the laser. As you can see, the, the laser scene is still here in our uh, file system. Let's go back to our laser weapon script. Go ahead and open that up. Now we're ready to write some code. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to import our laser scene that we defined. So let's create a new variable and we're going to call it laser scene. And we're going to use this load function that Godot has. And we're going to tell it to, from the root directory, uh, res colon slash slash look in our objects folder down here and look for laser.tscn. And this will load uh, the laser scene uh, into this variable. And so from there, we can create an instance of our lasers. So let's try to find a new variable here in the shoot function. And we're going to take the laser scene and call the instance function. Oops, missing an end there. Now, we want the laser, or the new laser, to um, spawn where our laser weapon is. And so to do that, we've got to set its position. So we're going to set laser.globalPosition, and we're going to set that equal to uh, the self.globalPosition. Self would be referring to um, 
you know, this node, this laser weapon node. So whatever, wherever it is in um, our game, that's where the laser is going to spawn from. So really quick, I want to talk about the laser scene, this line right here. How come it's not in the shoot function? Basically, anytime we shoot, the player shoots the laser, we're going to instance a new laser scene. And we have this line up here outside of the shoot function because we want it to only load uh, the scene from disk uh, once, you know, when this laser weapon is created. Otherwise, every time we shot a laser, we would have to load it from the hard drive, which is a lot slower than just loading it once and instancing off of that same um, scene. So let's go back to our player scene uh, over here and go ahead and select the laser weapon node and it's right here in, uh, in the middle. So go ahead and click and drag it and I'm actually going to drag it up here a little um, above the player's ship. And the reason I'm doing that is because if we open up the laser scene you'll notice that uh, the origin is in the center of this um, beam of the sprite. So to account for that, we're just gonna move it a little bit upwards off of the ship. And so now this is where new lasers will spawn when the player uh, clicks the shoot key, basically. Control S to save. Uh, let's go back to our laser weapon scene. Go back to the code. So our laser that we create here, our laser instance, won't exist in our game's world until we add it to the scene tree. But we have to think about this for a second. If we add our laser instance as a child of our laser weapon, which itself is a child of the player, that means the new laser will be a child of the player and it'll be tied to it. Let's say there's a scenario in our game where we shoot some lasers and then the player's ship blows up. Well, in that scenario, all the other lasers that have already been shot will also disappear because it's a child of the player and we don't want that. So what we're gonna wanna do is actually add our lasers to our, um, our root game node. That way they're not tied to the player. They exist, you know, as their own entities, as part of the game. So open up the laser weapon script again. And so we're going to have to call or access the, our game node that we have. And to do that, we can call in quote slash root slash game. And this will refer to our game node. And then we can add the laser as a child to that. All right, so now that we have this shoot function defined, we have to actually call it. So we're actually gonna do that in the player scene, just in case we ever wanna add, you know, multiple weapons to our player. So go ahead and open up that script. So we're actually gonna use a new function. This is a built-in function in Godot. The unhandled key input. So up here in the physics process, we are checking every physics frame whether or not the user has pressed an arrow key. But in this unhandled key input function, we are waiting for the OS, the computer's operating system, to tell us when uh, an input event has occurred. And we're going to be using the unhandled key input function as opposed to the regular key input function. And that's due to how Godot processes input. Um, basically, the GUI consumes uh, input first before, um, you know, the rest of the game does. I'll leave a link in the description of the Godot documentation where it talks about that. It's kind of an involved topic. So earlier we used these UI left, UI right. Um, 
input actions and that's actually you know defined by default in Godot but in this case we're actually going to be using a new action that isn't defined already we we'll say is action pressed you can use the arrow keys to go down to these and press tab to autocomplete and the one we want actually isn't here it's not one of the built-in ones so we're gonna have to define it we're gonna call this one shoot and we're gonna say if basically if the user presses the shoot action then and we're going to use this uh, dollar sign syntax and that basically is a shorthand way of getting any child node in this current scene and so as you can see um, basically these ones correlate to all the child nodes here so we want to get the laser weapon and we're going to call its uh, shoot function that we just wrote all right so we're calling an action uh, shoot but that hasn't been defined yet. So let's go ahead and define that. We're gonna do that up in here in the project settings. Go ahead, open that up. And go over here to the input map tab. And these, here we can see all uh, the input actions that Godot already gave us. So we're gonna define the new one that we called shoot. Go ahead and add that. And I'll add it to the bottom here. And then we can add a keybind to it. So go ahead and add an event and so I'll type key. And you can use whichever key you want. Uh, I'm going to use the space bar. It's going to be listening for the input. Just click whatever key you want to use and click OK. And now our new input action shoot is bound to the space bar. Go ahead and close that. Control S to save. All right, let's try running our project. Uh, we press the space bar, it uh, spawns a new laser. As you can see though, they don't uh, go anywhere. So let's fix that. Okay, so let's open up our laser scene and we're going to attach a script. So we're going to handle movement in the process function. And basically we're going to modify the position of the laser every frame. And we want the laser to travel straight up. So let's create a new variable for that. And I'm going to call it uh, direction. And it's going to be a vector 2. And it's going to have a zero value in the x-axis and negative one because negative, negative values in the y-axis are up. So that's the direction we want it to go. So we're actually going to add the value so that um, the laser constantly goes up every frame. Uh, value direction. And if we do this right now the way it is, it's going to go up one pixel uh, every frame but that's not what we want uh, we want it to go a little bit faster than that so let's set uh, a speed for it um, I'm going to call this one pro projectile speed projectile speed and we want the laser to travel faster than a ship so we're going to use 1000 so we're going to multiply this uh, upward vector by the projectile speed and then as always we're going to multiply by the delta to you know maintain smooth movement even with a choppy frame rate and again uh, self here refers to um, the laser object where the script is attached to itself so self's going to have a different value in whatever script you're writing it in it's going to be you know, this object itself. I hope that makes sense. It's perfectly valid to just write um, position, and that means the same thing. But, you know, sometimes I like to be, sometimes I feel like it's a little clearer when you actually write out the self of variable, you know, 
and access the property that way. So now when we run the project, the lasers go up. They don't interact with the asteroid yet, but you know, they shoot. All right, there's actually a problem in our game right now that you can't visibly see, but it's there. So every time we instance a new laser, um, our game has to, you know, um, use more um, of our computer's memory to make room for that laser. It's gonna take up more RAM, basically. So every time we shoot a laser, we're actually, our game is actually using more and more RAM. It's not much, because, you know, our laser is pretty small, pretty basic, just a simple sprite. But, you know, it's, over time, this will add up. You know, especially as the player, you know, shoots more and more lasers, more and more RAM is going to be consumed by our game. And we don't want that. So what we have to do is manage the memory we're using. So once a laser leaves the screen, it's basically no longer in our game. It's no longer affects our game. So we want to free up that memory again so that the user's computer can use it, you know, for whatever it needs to, needs to use it for. Luckily, Godot has a node to detect whether or not something is visible on the current viewport. And so let's add a new node, and it's called the Visibility Notifier uh, 2D node. So let's go ahead and add that to our laser. Uh, the default shape is fine. The laser is moving so fast anyway. So we'll just use that. So let's... Uh, go over here next to the inspector uh, window. It's the node tab right here, and we're going to go to the signal section. So basically, when um, our laser exits the viewport, go ahead and double click on that. Uh, we're going to attach this signal to our laser object, and it's going to create this method for us. Go ahead and click connect, and it's automatically going to open up laser.gd uh, with this new method. So when our laser exits the viewport, it's going to run whatever code we write here. So the code we want to use is pretty basic. We're just basically just going to free uh, the laser node, the laser instance from our game. So to do that, we're going to use the function Q free. And basically what this function is going to do is it's going to allow um, the game to process the rest of, you know, whatever it needs to do in the current frame. And then in the next frame, after that, it's going to free uh, this laser instance. So now when we um, run our project, and we shoot our lasers, um, the lasers will free themselves and you won't just be consuming more and more RAM as you shoot them. All right, we're going to stop there. As always, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to be notified when the next tutorial is out. Thanks for watching.